only got $5, but you want to try something new? We got you covered. Five games under $5 each. Only at Froggy's. Hobbies are expensive. Gaming is expensive. Frogathon, I don't have the muff money dollars for a five tera shit mega drive and an 88,000 horsepower processor. I don't got the skrill to spend on a new armored core and I don't want to sacrifice my life force to play something that is designed to take my money. Look, I get it. I ate nothing but rice, beans, and tortillas for a lot of meals. I was the bargain bin kid. I got two games a year, usually. Birthday and Christmas. I know people who eat potted meat. That is just cat food, by the way. Me and the knuckle-dragging Neanderthal that I've employed MC Cheshire has sifted through the mud for gold and we lay our results at your feet. We're gonna be alternating between our own edited segments and picks so there's a difference in style. The rules, no free to play, no sales. These are honest to goodness cheap ass games, I swear it. I, hand to gosh, I swear it. Heads up, my favorite is my last pick. With all that said, let's begin. Aka Manto. So, I'm starting off with what I consider to be a pretty strong one, but it's also not my type of game, so apologies if I misrepresent it. It's a horror game based off the Japanese urban legend Akamanto who appears in public or school restrooms. The most relevant version of the story to the game is that Akamanto will offer you red or blue toilet paper. Choosing one or the other decides how he'll kill you. The setup to the game is that you're being forced into an abandoned high school by a couple of bullies. Walking into the schoolyard, you'll find that the only way to progress is to open a bathroom stall with the words, take the red or blue slip on it. It only has the red slip. So you take it, and you can open it. This presumably summons Akamanto to stalk you. Your goal is unclear, because you were forced here, but you can learn about how the school came to be shut down and how it's all connected to this killer spirit. There are a couple of endings. One of them is the regular ending, and the other is the true ending. The true ending is a little harder to get, and it's also a lot more satisfying. The graphics are heavily polygonal with a pixelated effect over everything, which gives it a retro feel. You know, I was getting immersed right away by the mood, the rain, the colors, and I turn around and I see two anime girls right behind me. <laughs> like, imagine you're at the fucking bank or something, and you turn around, and you just people behind you are just like... The game is devoid of music, and is really quiet in order to help you to get to know when Akamanto is near. Not much noise besides your footsteps, the flick of your lighter to open it, little things like that to accompany you. The atmosphere is really effective, or at least it was on me. I loved walking around, and when shit started to go down, I freaked the fuck out first time playing. Fuck him, you bitch, you bitch, I hate you. The gameplay is actually pretty complex for a horror game so cheap. Uh, I don't have a point of reference because I don't play horror games, but you travel across the school and use miscellaneous items you find in order to solve puzzles scattered around in some order to progress. It's best that you learn the mechanics on your own little by little to be scared for as long as possible. Horror games get less scary when you keep the mechanics in your head at all times. It gamifies it more, which is what we are instinctually going to do, or it's what I wanted to do as soon as possible. When you finally finish one of the game ending puzzles, it is amazing. Not only did you have to figure out where to put shit, but you also had to get past Akamanto to do it. Biggest warning for the game, uh, if you quit or you die, uh, you start over. But if you're not like an idiot like me, you should beat it on the first try. You get a surprising amount of health in this game. I'm absolutely a bitch when it comes to horror games, so I did not last long. When I, when I got scared, my fucking fingers were like, it was like fucking fumbling and uh, trying to get to the W key, you know, my middle finger, and I might hit the Q key on accident, so I would drop whatever's in my hand. Sometimes that would be my lighter, my literal fucking light source. So it's uh, extra immersive in that sense. I'm quitting. Um, it's been a good stream. It's been a bad stream. I, I, I think I just changed everything to Japanese. Uh, have a good day. Akamanto feels like more than a game you would find in a bargain bin, which is why I'm talking about it. I'd say an average player could get an hour and a half, maybe two hours out of the game, though. If you know the creator, Chilla's Arts, other games, then you know that they're no stranger to creating some pretty stylish and memorable horror experience. They actually have a whole list of other horror games you can play for under $5. I'm a fan of their work. Uh, from a distance, of course. I'll just, uh, let Markiplier be my window into that. The Ku Klux Klan! Oh no! Armored Head is a single-player arena shooter where you kill waves of enemies, collect an arsenal over rounds of progressing difficulty, and slowly but surely learn the arena you're fighting for your life in like the back of your hand. The gameplay progression is linear. Shoot, kill, get gun. Shoot more, kill more, get more gun. New enemies arrive, you have to manage your ammo, kill combos, get you more resources, but the real progression is knowledge-based. Once you figure out, you can spend resources, herd the enemy, use tricks to traverse the map more efficiently to points of interest, learn each enemy's weakest point and the weapon most effective against them. The gameplay is rather static, but you're not. You can always get better. 
You have a few abilities, most are about movement and one that slows down time, but the main mechanic is hot switching between weapons like any other boomer shooter that's come out in the last couple years. There's bosses, secrets, achievements, and it's all very tight. No fluff, just the juicy heart of a game and nothing else. They don't really explain anything or how anything works. Well, I don't know what's happening when the cow eats my points. Which could be very annoying to you, or it could be very satisfying once you figure things out. Oh, there's weak points that do exponential damage. Interesting. Oh, oh fuck, that's the cow. If you're the type to obsessively improve and conquer a game, basking in the satisfaction of victory and perfection, this game's for you. <laughs> Why is the cow trying to kiss me, dude? Also, there's a cow. Yomi Hustle. Short for your only move is Hustle. Do you remember those six stick figure fights on YouTube that played like three days grace or some shit? Hype as shit imaginable. Looking back at it, it was an efficient way to communicate some over the top choreography in your head without some stupid budget required to make a high quality anime experience. Yomi Hustle makes those fights the core of their game. But Fwag, I'm no good at funny games. I don't know how to play these things, doi. You are stupid. You are so stupid. I suck at fighting games too, but uh, I can teach you one term. Yomi. It's the Japanese term for reading, as in reading your opponent in this context. Which is all this game is, because it's turn-based. Well, not really. You both choose your moves and you perform them at the same time. Or your character performs them, you know what I mean. After choosing a move, before you lock it in, you can see a projection of where your next move will take you but obviously not your opponent's next move. You can, however, select a hypothetical move for them to use so you can watch how it interacts with you. Pretty much everything in this game is happening in the player's heads, and when you get really good at this game, it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. Will he move that way? Then I'll do this. Will he move that way? Then I'll do this. If you're bad at the game like me, you're just gonna pick whatever looks cool. This game is a fighting game, but it's slowed down moment to moment. The way the game is set up can actually teach you a little bit about the mentality of fighting games. It even teaches you the insane importance of frame advantage. This game was oddly helpful to me in understanding fighting games. It was weird. It's got a love and reverence for other games while also functioning as something entirely different, using its turn-based nature for wild movement options and pinpoint accurate moves, and at the end of it all, you rewind it for an amazing fight scene that you and your opponent choreographed the entire time you were playing. Even if you lost, you got sour, you want to go next, you gotta watch it. You need to watch it. It's tradition. At five bucks, you can get a few good evenings out of it with your friends, and it's a crazy ass game that offers something genuinely unique. Hard to get more for your dollar than that. Super Kiwi 64 is exactly what it sounds like, a love letter to the earliest generation of 3D platformers. Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Spyro, it's a fun little genre, and it's hard to deny the simple charm and enjoyment of moving around and getting little doodads until you got an A plus on the level. We've seen attempts at rejuvenating the genre in recent years with successes like A Hat in Time and embarrassments like Ukulele, but I think Super Kiwi 64 is something really unique in the genre. It's really short. Usually that's a negative, but with collectathons, I get fatigued after going through a few of the massive worlds with a million rabbit trails to follow. There's a great amount of fun in exploring a huge world where there's always something new to find around every corner, but sitting down and burning through a whole game in an hour, getting to experience all of the stage variety without any of the burnout, that's really fun too. And Kiwi is the only place I've seen this genre done well in a bite-sized portion. It has all the fun little bells and whistles I wanted, levels of different themes, fluid and engaging movement, a couple new mechanics after progression, and great vibes. The music isn't rivaling Koji Kondo, but it evokes him. And it's nice. I beat it in an hour, and I really enjoyed the experience. It's like free samples at an ice cream shop. Even if you don't think you can stomach three scoops of triple chocolate ice cream fudge sundae, one spoonful is always delicious. Before my final pick, I wanted to take a second to shout out some other games that could have fit in this video, but I didn't want to buy all of them and play all of them. Uh, I found a couple of them, though. That's right, you stupid, dumb, dumb, fucking idiot. It's- I clickbaited you, stupid. It's not actually five games, it's like 20-something. Let's go! Vampire Survivors, a lottery machine designer made a roguelike, and it's just as addicting as it sounds. Insanely popular. Kind of inspired its own genre, too. Halls of Torment, seems like a Vampire Survivor sort of thing, but it's got an awesome classic Diablo sort of paint. Looks hard. It comes in waves. It's more of an art piece than a game, honestly. Don't buy it if you're looking for gameplay. It's more of a 20-minute window into a story. Friday the 13th, the game. Lots of fun to be had here with the lads, like Dead by 
by daylight but more goofy less competitive uh, it's gonna shut down late next year so play it while you can for five bucks Binding of Isaac it is one of the most beloved indies and roguelikes in general it is the lesser version but at five dollars it is totally worth it if you've never tried it I never got into it but I can see how people get addicted to this stuff the room I've never played it but I always see this pop up on Steam it looks cool as hell a game I play with my mom or my sister seems like a puzzle game for puzzle enthusiasts doom it's doom it, it's good dude come on you know this the frog detective games there are quick and simple puzzle games great for young children that know how to read I played this with my kid sister like a great kids cartoon it's got a couple chuckles out of me too Simuland is a card game that has you influence rising civilizations playing as God I played this not my thing but it seems pretty cool super hexagon dog I used to fuck on some super hexagon in my graphic design class in high school after I got done with the assignments arcade type game what you see is what you get pretty fun downwell is a sick game where you go down to progress shoot enemies with your gun boots avoid enemies and alter your runs with items seems really well made stick fight the game chaotic game I guess you could call it a platform fighter a platform shooter Whatever, it's a nutty party game. Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk is a short visual novel that attempts to show the hindrance of doing something as simple as purchasing milk with a debilitating mental illness. I'd be cautious of this game if you suffer from depression. It's a dollar and is incredibly short. Return to Castle Wolfenstein. I'll be honest, dude, never played it. Seems fun and it's got very positive reviews. The Crown of Leaves. Now, I'm not into visual novels, but I wanted to shout it out because the art just looks fantastic. Look at this shit. Dive Kick. It's a fighting game where you win in one hit. It's fun with friends. Guns of Icarus Online. It's a PvP game where you fight each other on giant steampunk ships. You repair, steer, and shoot at the enemy. It requires a lot of coordination and it's excellent when your whole team is talking. I had a lot of fun with this back in the day, but it's a dead game. You need a couple teams of friends to make it fun, which could be a really tough sell. Devolver Bootlegs. It's a collection of simplified demakes featuring Devolver digital published games. Looks really fun and stylish. Finally, this one almost made it into the actual video, but it was $6, so it was not included. It is pseudo regalia. Faithful polygonal art style to the N64 with a slowed frame rate on the characters to add that extra old school feel. Feeling. All I've seen from the game is the movement mechanics, which is all I need. It looks really fun. I'm gonna be playing it after all this stuff that I've been getting into. Seizure warning before my top pick, alright? Are you ready? Post Void is a first-person shooter roguelike. It's got bright colors, flashing lights, it's psychedelic and really fucking weird. Like Doom, it's got 3D environments and 2D sprites. The sprites have a hand-drawn art style which lends itself to the psychotic visuals. It's hard to pay attention to anything which is likely part of the experience. The music is frantic and fast-paced, and the game itself encourages you to run through the levels screaming and frothing at the mouth. A mad dash to the finish every single time. If you die, you load back into the game instantly since the game requires almost nothing to run. You're meant to get so good, you barely even think anymore. How do they accomplish this? Well, your health bar is a constantly leaking glass skull. Killing enemies refills the skull for it to only continue leaking. It has roguelike elements, but it feels way less dependent on that than most roguelikes, I would argue. Success in this game is dictated by how well you can click heads while zooming through a level. It is adrenaline pumping. I think a lot of modern shooters are afraid to get this wildly fast paced for fear of alienating an audience. And I'm sure nobody wants an art style that can literally hurt a percentage of the population that just looks at it. It looks fucking awesome, by the way. I'm not a professional artist, but I do draw from time to time. I think most people who have familiarity with creating anything really appreciate art styles that push what is acceptable. This game accomplishes that, and so does Hylix. I talk about Hylix in my friend's video. The link to that is in the description. You should be able to beat it start to finish in 10 minutes, but it'll take a regular person several tries. I'm gonna beat it after this, and despite that, I'm sure I'll come back again and play. The game feels amazing. If your eyes didn't hurt looking at this, then give it a try. Penny wasn't lying. This is the best $3 game on Steam. Hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, check the description. There is an extension to it uh, on my friend's channel. Uh, okay, but video's over. Bye.